Hello Bitwiggers, today I want to show you the script for Bitwig for the Arturia Beatstep. A little nice and um, lightweight controller to put in your bag and take with you on a trip. At first sight it doesn't look too powerful, but the script is pretty interesting and you can do quite a lot of stuff with it. What I first need to point out, the sad thing about the controller is that you can't program these buttons here. So this is pretty a shame because I would really like to use the shift key uh, and also play and stop. But if you use anyone, the internal sequencer starts and everything freaks out. So stay away from these buttons, which is a shame, but uh, don't be too worried. I replaced them with functionality on the right and you can get the full power. In the script there are several modes and to access the modes you use this big knob here. So if you move to the left you have the track mode, which is also uh, for navigating and your transport controls. And then you have a device mode, then you have a play mode, and you have a drum mode, and you have even a sequencer mode and a session mode, so a lot of stuff in there. And depending on your mode, the behavior of your pads and on your knobs is completely different. So let's go to the first one, the track one. So on the left there is play and stop. So start one. So you see different color that it's playing. Press again to stop. The next one is um, your record button, so you enable global recording. And you have to play, press uh, play again to make it record. The next one toggles the, the repeats. So if you have a loop going on in range mode, the next one is turning the metronome on and off. The next one uh, is for tapping the tempo. So you can change your tempo with that one. That one is unused so far. And that one toggles the track banks in steps of eight up and down. This is necessary uh, because on here on the top with these eight pads you can select your track. And if you have more than eight you go up one and then you can access the ninth track and so on. And down again. The knobs in that first mode uh, act as your uh, channel controller so you have basically the options for one channel with some global stuff mixed. So let's start with that one. This is the volume. That one is for changing the panorama. Uh, next one enables mute and next one solo. So these are the track specific ones and if I go to the second row these are also track specific because I changed the first send, the second send and so on with the sends. This one is also track related because it changes the crossfader assignments. This uh, drum kit is now playing on, on the channel A and if I go to the second one it's already set to B so I can set that to B. And then on that button you find the gross fader, so you can change from left to right. Let's uh, play. And let's mute that one. So we only have the bass now and the drum. And now you can use the gross fader. So we only have the drum. And now we only have the bass going on and this is especially interesting for DJing. So what else do we have? Um, so your track controls here. That one changes the tempo. So you don't only can tap it, but you can always also select it with that one. And the next one moves your play cursor. To see that we should change the range mode. And now with that one you can change the play cursor, which is pretty at the end now. Let's take it here. So here is the play cursor and you can move with that one the play cursor. And the next one is the main volume. So let's have a look at the master channel here. 
and here you can change the master volume. So that was the first mode. The next mode is the device mode. So let's have a look at, uh, at the polysynth. So if you are at the device, you see uh, the currently controlled parameters in a specific color and uh, the top eight knobs are for controlling the parameters. So you can change the pitch, the shape, sub, and so on. And to go to the next bank with eight parameters, uh, again, like with tracks, you control here the banks. So go up bank, next bank here again. Now the same color coding applies and you can control these or go down the banks again. So the first row controls the parameters and the second row controls the macros. So for each device you can set macros. Here are already some uh, mapped. So here you can change the first macro, second macro and so on. And with the first button row you can select the banks, go through all the banks and uh, if the eight banks are not enough you can use these two to jump to the ninth and then you can select the 10th, 11th and so on if there are so many parameters. Uh, the rest of the options uh, here are uh, the first one turns the device on and off. These two buttons are for going in and out of a device so if now you have an instrument layer and the instrument layer is selected you can move the layers with uh, these two buttons and then you can go inside a layer with that button and then you can here change the parameters and you can go outside of the layer with the other one and you're back here at the start. Uh, so much for the device layer. Next layer is the play layer for playing it. So let's go to something playable. And in the play mode, uh, this is also the scale, like you have them on the push. They only have two rows here. These are the bass notes and the other are the scale notes. The upper part here is pretty similar to what you have in, the, in a track control mode. Uh, the first row is completely identical and here are four cents. Different are those four knobs. These are for changing the scale settings here. So if you enable that one, you can change to chromatic mode or in key mode. So uh, if you have that one, you can also have the notes which are not in scale. These are off here. And here you can select what is the root note. So you can have D now. And with the next one, you can select the scale. So now we have a scale of D minor. And the last one, pitch it up and down. So this goes an octave up or down. So that's the note mode for playing. Next mode is the drum mode. And not a, even drum mode, but even a drum sequencer. Again here, the first row is exactly the same as with the track mode. Also the sends are the sends here and different are these uh, for buttons. What you do, the important one is that one. Here you can toggle between one uh, line of 16 steps of a specific sound or your specific drum pad. So we need to select a drum machine and now you can change with that one between sequence or play and select. So play and select means you can play. And you can select the grid uh, for sequencing. So let's have... Let's solo them. So we have only the, the, uh, the track playing. We have selected the bass drum. You can now sequence or record it. So if I do sequence, I have the bass drum selected, go to the sequence mode. So you have 16 steps running. You can insert your bass drum, move back here to the selection. You can have a snare, 
go back to the emote, I go snares, select the hi-hat, back to the play mode, enter the hi-hats, and you can have a pretty nifty sequencer. And the other three buttons here, uh, this is again going up or down, so you can change where you are, you see that here, it moves your grid up and down. And the second one changes the resolution, so we now have 16th notes, and you can have this to triplets, and 32, or 8, and the grid changes accordingly. So let's go back to the 16th notes. And that one changes the part. So what you have seen, if you have a longer, now we have one measure running, if you have more than one measures, uh, or you have a higher resolution than 16, let's say we go to 32, then you see it runs out of the grid. And with that knob, you can move between those parts of your sequence. So this is the second part and this is the first part. So much for the drum sequencer. And the next one is the sequencer mode, which is intended for sequencing yeah, notes. The idea is pretty the same as with a drum sequencer. Also, again, the first row is the same as in a track mode, and also these four buttons are the same, and these four knobs act exactly the same as uh, with the drum sequencer. So here, select your note. Maybe we should go to somewhere where there is a note. Let's go to the space mode part, create a new track. And also here you select now your note you want to edit, and with that one you go into the sequencer view, Uh, we have still solo activated, let's turn that off. And go back, let's select that node. And you can use it as a sequencer. And finally, the last mode is the session mode. And in the session mode, again, the first and those four buttons are the same and these four are not used. What you can do is you have eight scenes and you can start a scene. So let's start the first scene, third scene, fourth scene, and so on. And if you have more than eight scenes, you can here move in steps of eight, so now you could start the ninth scene, which doesn't exist, so everything stops. That was about BeatStep for Bitwig script, and I hope you enjoyed it, and you'll like it, and yeah, see you in another tutorial. Bye!